Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. When you look at a blog or a news site, your mind kicks into high gear and it begins to parse all the pieces and parts of the site that you're looking at. Then it stores into memory the things that interest you. Now, our minds are so good at doing this that we can even take in information from a website that we've never seen before, which might follow different ways of displaying data. But for a moment, I'm going to do a little thought experiment. Imagine that before you consumed anything from a web page, you had to understand all of the relationships that the web page had in advance. For example, you would require a perfect understanding of the relationship between the writer and the article, or a perfect understanding of the relationship of the article to the advertisement. And if you didn't understand that relationship and all the others, your brain would literally say no to taking in the information. Okay, I know this is a weird thought experiment, but this is literally what happens when we store data in a relational database. Because in a relational database, we have to know up front what the structure or schema of the data is before we write data into it. And this prerequisite is one of the primary reasons why NoSQL and Hadoop came about. Now, you may have seen my videos that compare Hadoop to SQL, but in this video, I want to spend time discussing NoSQL. NoSQL represents a really broad category of databases which allow large quantities of unstructured and semi-structured data to be stored and managed. Now, additionally, they're designed to handle high levels of reads and writes while scaling horizontally. So to better explain this, let's go back to our previous example. But this time, I'm going to challenge an assumption that we made earlier about our ability to consume data. If you take an honest assessment of your capacity to parse a web page or a data visualization, you'll find that your mind actually needs quite a bit of context before it can make heads or tails of what you're looking at. To test this, take a look at some of the data visualizations on D3JS. It's a popular open source data visualization template site. Pick out some of the less common data visualizations and you'll come to the realization that your understanding of what's going on is highly reliant on your own ability to master a previously used context or experience. Now compare this to browsing your favorite web page. You don't fumble around trying to figure out how to use it. Instead, you go immediately into data processing and storage mode. So what we can learn from this is that there's a performance gain when we're reading records if we can apply a structure to the information we're storing. However, it takes a little more time up front to define those categories and structures in our own minds. And it turns out that databases are the same way. Now, relational databases take this to one extreme, being highly structured, and Hadoop takes it to the other, being highly unstructured. Now, NoSQL, on the other hand, sits in this Goldilocks zone. They allow you to apply a structure to the data, but they don't require it up front, meaning I can store data even though there isn't a logical category for it yet. So let me give you a couple of examples and I'll compare it to SQL. Imagine that I'm storing a product catalog in a relational database and I get new SKUs on a regular basis from our suppliers. Now, in a relational database, I would have my data model ready to consume data from our suppliers. As data would come in, I would need to ensure that the data fits the structure that I've defined. Now, if it didn't, I would need to make a decision. Either I would transform the data to fit our model or change the model to fit the new data element. Now, in most cases, organizations begin transforming the data, and it takes a serious amount of discipline and effort to do so because they're receiving lots of SKUs on a regular basis from their manufacturers or suppliers. Now imagine that I have a NoSQL database on the back end. I still would have the data transformations which could apply tagging to the data, but if data came in which I had not previously categorized, it would be able to still land in the NoSQL database. I could then see the data later and decide if it's a common enough category to create a semi-structured tag for it, which will enable it to be processed quickly for future read writes. Now, in this example, I've narrowed my NoSQL type to a document store. But there's a lot of different kinds of NoSQL databases with a lot of different kinds of structural advantages. For example, I have a column store, which stores data in columns, and it can expand to billions of columns, allowing for the data to be captured and stored and then later categorized and combined. You also have graph databases, which store natural data relationships between data elements to reveal networks like social networks. Then you also have hybrid cache stores, which combine the power of a document store, which we've been talking about in this example, with sophisticated 
sophisticated caching to deliver scalability and speed. The bottom line is that we no longer live in a world of a one-size-fits-all database. There are tangible benefits of taking processes that previously were forced into a relational database and considering the use of NoSQL and Hadoop. Intricity can help you evaluate your backend landscape and conduct a modernization review. Now, I recommend you reach out to Intricity and talk with one of our specialists. We can provide an unbiased evaluation, which allows you to better support your internal business processes, which doesn't put a square peg in a round hole.